Um, I don't know. I think that if people enjoy your music, um, they're going to enjoy it. And it's, in some ways, um, once people know the songs better, um, they have heard them a thousand times, they, they respond to them um, immediately. Like the people are kind of conditioned, like when they hear, for, for us, for instance, um, one of our songs, The Ballad of Neville and Luna, opens with this drum part. And like when people hear that, they immediately know what they're doing. They like know the dance steps they've done before. Mm -hmm. They know who they're going to run to in the crowd and be like, let's dance the song together. Um, and they kind of are conditioned to it already. Whereas when you're playing a new song, um, I don't think that you get that. So there's a sort of give and take of things being familiar as opposed to all being really fresh. Mm -hmm. And like personally, from like a fan point of view, like I always dance like crazy at shows, even if like I'm um, like tired or like it's or something, I was just dance like crazy, and even if I've heard the song like a million times, I just like, like to encourage you to dance, so just act crazy. That's should be on a t-shirt. Dance, dance crazy, even if it's a school night. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty, it sums up Wizard Rock. I have to see small fans of probably Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and do you guys feel pressure to continue to create music that's going to be as popular as other things like I mean, with every album, with every song, is there a fear that somehow, you know, nobody's gonna like it around this time, or do you feel that you have a, a loyal enough following that you know, not that I'm saying that you could produce something that you didn't put your heart into, but that people will appreciate it because they like you as musicians? Uh, there's always, I mean, I'm just gonna be completely straight. There's at, at things like this or in an interview. There's always pressure to say like what the right thing is to say and makes you look cool and the honest thing. And the honest thing is, of course, there's that pressure. Because, um, you know, like, I really like that people like some of our songs and you know, I want to write something that people can relate to and sing along to and dance to. Um, but on the flip side, uh, I, I mean, I don't mean to be negative, but I've seen some bands, like, definitely not try and put out stuff that is below their ability and below their, you know, what they're capable of and people still respond really well to. So it's it's really frustrating then when, you know, like, uh, you, just, you work really hard and get, like, a, you know, a lot of work done on something, and then somebody responds really well to something that you know somebody else, like, spent an hour. Yeah. Right. Okay, cool, you know. So um, that's a really positive and really negative part of Wizard Rock, right. I think, is that the fans are so loyal and sort of, like, will stick with us through anything but it's like, well, I, I feel like we should reward people by giving them something and to stick with. And that's, and that's, so. that's like the beauty of Wizard Rock, too, is that with almost every single band, you they get better with every album. But then, like, when you become one of those bands, you're like, when your next album comes, you're like, how am I going to make this better? You're like, um, you, I, you know, so it's kind of, I got to the point where, I'm just trying to make myself happy with how it sounds and how it is. And it's a huge win if other people listen to it and like it. So, you know. I have to interject here. I, as a longer term fan, I have this fantasy that some of you who have been around for a while would go back and reproduce your first album. Well, you're oh. very lucky. <laughs> Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> That's what we're doing. So. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 I sit around, you know, and go, I was like, mm -hmm. that would be so much better. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I, at this point, for us, um, for the Remus Lupins, and I, I hope this doesn't come across as arrogant, but like every album that we've done, we've really tried to like do the very best album we could. And when we released Nevermind the Furthermore, I was like, the last song on that album is called The End, and we were going to be done, because I definitely thought we couldn't do anything better than that. And um, we came together and worked on the rest of the silence, and I feel like we, we topped ourselves with that. But we had like a choir and every instrument that we have in our homes on that album. And there's really, literally from this point, there's literally nowhere to go but back. So um, we're going to go back and re-record some of our earlier stuff. Because those songs are great, but you know, I'm sure everybody here has experienced, you know, there are car speakers blowing out by some of the uh, the not sense. great production values yeah. that, that happen early on where you're right. learning. You and know? we get to hear, I feel like you guys improve too yes. for live shows, right? And yes. so it's like this new version of S Song is great, but not everybody has a chance to see Wizard Rock is live and listen so to the evolution exactly. of a song like Looking But it's also, yeah. it's also, you know, 
I think I'm pretty sure almost every band out there, their first album that they produced, you didn't expect it to go this far. Right. I can tell you. Yeah. One of her pink album songs came on the iPod the other day, and she's like, "Oh my God, turn it off!" <laughs> and I was like, "What?" Can we talk song? about? I mean, again, not not disparaging at all, but the first Harry and the Potters record. It's like filled with great songs that are recorded like inside of a tin can or something. <laughs> and it's, it's crazy because I'll, I mean, I'll watch them at shows and be like, yes, wizard chess. And then see, you know, try to listen to it on my computer and I'm like, no, stop the wizard chess. <laughs> so I think that that's, that's been a huge thing. That wizard rock has always been, been better live than on albums, which is so weird. Like that's, I can't think of any other community that, that's ever true. Right, yeah, right. Okay, so we're going to shift the conversation a little bit now that we've talked about Wizard Rock, um, because Wizard Rock isn't the only music-based community that's out there, really. We've got, you know, there are definitely people who sing songs about Star Trek. Um, you have filkers who are, you know, doing songs about generally just sitting in circles and, and singing to each other and it's a whole community about that. And then we also have sort of the, the geek rock and nerdcore, which has become slightly more mainstream as people use the internet more and more. And so Matt's been involved in the nerdcore community for a while now. And um, so can you just tell us a little bit about how it started? Like what, you know, the forerunners and, and what the mindset was at the beginning? I think the, the well, the, the name Nerdcore comes from uh, an MC Frontalot song called Nerdcore Rising, um, and everybody just kind of adopted the name from that, and, and uh, the, the chorus is, uh, oh crap, I can't remember the chorus, um, but it's, you know, it, it just kind of grew from there, and so uh, that's why Frontalot tends to be seen as the, uh, sort of the godfather of the Nerdcore scene. Um, but then there was also um, a bunch of different artists uh, out there that were kind of doing similar, you know, sort of nerdy hip hop um, kind of stuff. And once, uh, so Front of Lock kind of came out and, and was doing his thing, and there were other folks that were doing regional things, folks like Whitey Cracker, and then the like. Um, like MC Chris and MC Lars were kind of associated with that, even though they've distanced themselves from it since. Um, but then uh, a guy by the name of High C started a, a, a message board called Ryan Torrance, and um, that ended up kind of being the central location that everybody sort of congregated to, and they started putting out uh, these compilations that were, you submitted a track, it was on. and. There was some, some very good stuff, and there was honestly a lot of crap. Um, and it just kind of kind of grew from there, and, and everybody just kind of, you know, it, they had sort of that community, and some people started coming and interacting and, and chatting with each other and stuff, and it kind of grew from there. Okay, and so much like Wizard Rock, you go to one of these shows, like you know these bands, you talk to these guys, you talk to, you know, the band members, and you have you know, their music, you're downloading it, you're following them, that sort of thing. Yeah, there's actually not as many um, shows within uh, the nerdcore scene. Uh, there's a couple of, of large kind of uh, festivals, uh, PAX and uh, Nerdpalooza and stuff, and some of the bigger, like the MC Frontal Lots and, and stuff will tour. Um, but most folks, it's, you know, they'll occasionally put together local shows or they'll play with you know somebody else or something, but uh, there's not a whole lot. It's, it's much more kind of studio based. Okay, so you would say that it's less like DIY and anybody can do this sort of attitude. Than well, no, have? it is. It is. Good. It does have that that DIY thing, but it's it's you know the kid in their in their in their you know bedroom recording something on gotcha. you know they're they're pulling beats off of off of an internet site. And recording their own rhymes to go on top of that, and they're 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 kind of putting it out there, and they don't take you know there isn't a uh, there is becoming more I think possibly of a, of a push to do sort of live shows and stuff, but 